So tell us what your name is and where you came from. Uh, so I'm Isela Ventura, and I'm from Colorado. <laughs> nice. Welcome. Um, why don't you share with us your childhood and from where it started? Yeah, so uh, my parents had me at a very young age. My mom was 14 and my dad was 16. So that already is pretty interesting. Uh, but So we grew up in a very Catholic home, very poor. Uh, it was multiple families in one home. And uh, we had very traditional morals, I guess you could say. So we, uh, I saw people pray to idols, worshiping, uh, you know, a lot of not Christian stuff, I guess you can say. Uh, there was saints all over the house. Uh, everything like that. And so I grew up, you know, believing that that was, that was the proper religion. And I also believed uh, that a man, uh, the way that a man treated a woman was very different than I do now. But uh, I saw my dad physically hurt my mom a lot. Uh, he was a very abusive man. He was an alcoholic. And so I grew up thinking that was how a man should treat a woman. You know, a woman stays quiet and a man does whatever he wants. And so uh, I just grew up with that mentality. Mentality, and no matter what, I always respected my father. And so um, after, I remember a very specific day, my father and my mom, because they loved to party, they decided to leave, and my father never came back. And I found out that he was deported. And so he was my world. And so as a daddy's girl, that shattered everything possible for me. And we were left with absolutely nothing. So we were living in a hotel for a while, and then, you know, funds start to run out. And we went to living from a hotel to being homeless and to living in a shelter. And so we were, I was going to school and then, you know, going to a shelter in the night. And so that was my life for a while until uh, social services started working with us. And we actually uh, moved into a small room uh, in a house. So it wasn't even a, like an entire house. It was just one small room where all five of us lived. And so that was my life for a while. <laughs> Wow, um, that w doesn't seem like it was an easy childhood growing up, especially with everything that happened with your father. Um, what was the, I guess, the turning point or something that really marked you guys as a family um, when you were this age? Yeah, so there was one day where there was a festival going on, and since we had no money, my mom felt terrible that she couldn't um, take us. And so we decided to clean the house, which was weird because, you know, we never cleaned. And so we decided to clean it completely spotless. And I remember we decided to get into our best clothes. Uh, someone in the family just had the idea to let's go on a walk. And so we got into some very nice clothes, what we had at the time, and we decided to just go on a walk. And as we were walking, we heard worship music. And uh, we never had heard music, worship music before. You know, we were used to the yelling and everything. And so it was very nice to hear. And I remember we decided to follow the music. And as soon as we got to where the music was playing, there was uh, a church and they were just worshiping in the park and so I remember we decided to stay and my mom was like breaking down in tears completely and uh, I remember you know feeling embarrassed I don't know why she's crying I don't understand what's going on and the pastor came up and prayed for us and uh, I like to say that he and his family rescued us because from that moment there was a rainbow in the sky and it was like a new beginning in the park <laughs> not even inside four walls in the park and he prayed for us and he just completely rescued us and that was the turning point point for my family. Aw, let's give God some praise. It's crazy how she was rescued. Her family felt rescued from outside of the four walls of the church. It was people who had taken the church outside of the four walls that really would be able to encounter people like her and her family who were broken, who were in need. And so what else um, happened from that moment on? Yeah, so I decided to go to my first youth retreat that November, and uh, I remember encountering God for the very first time in my life, speaking in tongues, and I didn't know I was speaking in tongues at the time, it just happened, and uh, later someone explained to me, oh, you were speaking in tongues, <laughs> but uh, I remember I just fell in love with God, I just completely fell in love with God, and I went home, and, and it felt like nothing had changed, we were still battling a lot, but I remember feeling in the middle of the night, like it would be dark, and I would just, and we still had idols 
bills up, I would just begin to pray and just intercede for my family. And I was like, you know, 12, but I remember feeling the need to just pray and around the room and everything. And my sister would like get under the covers and just like, you know, shake because she was scared. But I would I would intercede for my family. And uh, little by little, we started taking down the altars that we had, the idols, everything. And my family is saved. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so how did you end up coming to Hungry Gen? How did you hear about internship and how did you get here? Yeah, so that same youth retreat I had been going to every year. Uh, and last year in November, Pastor Vlad was actually preaching there. And I had been rejected from my dream college, even though I had been accepted uh, into other ones. I just remember feeling crushed and like I wasn't good enough. And I was like, God, you know, this is it's a Christian college. What else could you want from me? And I remember being at the altar, being at the altar. And I felt God tell me, uh, Hungry Jen, I remember Hungry Jen. And uh, he was just, he was just, he kept, I kept hearing that over and over. And so I spoke to Joe uh, after service and uh, he explained to me and I went home and applied. And uh, here I am at Hungry Jen. (laughs) Amen. Well, we give God the praise for your life, for your family. (laughs) Amen. And not only did you come, but Something happened when you and your mom came when she dropped you off the first time. Yeah, so our first service here, uh, I didn't know, you know, I'm from a small town, so one service is the regular, and so we stayed for both services, not realizing they're the same, but uh, we decided to stay, and we sat through both of them, and uh I remember my mom decided to to stay and she just was seeking deliverance and uh, she decided to have a private uh, session with someone and she was just completely set free, completely delivered. Seven years later, it just shows you keep praying. I mean, keep praying because even if you don't see it right away, it is coming. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. 